This is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and I've been wanting to do a video on this ever since I started doing these videos, and nobody's asked about it, so I just figured I'd wait until somebody asked. And it's a video on how to become uh, organic certified or and biodynamic certified. And nobody's ever asked. Nobody's contacted me about it except one person. I kind of had one other person, but they didn't really seem like they were with the biodynamic program of community. And it was more about themselves. So um, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, it's, uh, it's about helping people. And I started on this journey myself because I thought I could make lots of money if I was biodynamic certified. And it led me on a journey that I'm on now and that's more of a journey of purpose-driven life, I guess. And that's kind of the philosophy of biodynamics, I think. But when I started, I wanted to get certified, and I knew about biodynamics because I grew up in Mendocino County, California, next to a biodynamic wine. Or uh, I didn't grow up next to them, but my parents had a property after I left home next to a biodynamic wine um, winery in Northern California. And um, so I, I, I was familiar with biodynamics, but um, nobody really had ever heard of it uh, around Florida until I started preaching about it. <clears throat> and I just thought there would be more interest in um, biodynamic farming and organic farming around here, but this area seems kind of devoid of any interest in that. Um, but I had one person reach out to me, one couple, and they finally said that they should maybe they should get biodynamic certified. So I wanted to hear that before I made this video from at least one person. So I heard, I have hope. <clears throat> of course, they moved to Florida from Indiana and they live in Tampa now, Tampa area. So um, it's going to take people moving into the area that uh, have different views. So that's good because a lot of people move into Florida. But so I uh, didn't really know how to go about doing it. And I was kind of on my own. I had to figure it out by myself. So the uh, first thing I did was go to Demeter USA and um, uh, print out their biodynamic farm and processing um, standards manual. And so I printed that out. And then I was like, oh, maybe I need an application. So then I like contacted them and they sent me an application. And then I saw that their standard, their, their baseline was the USDA standard. So you had to go through everything for the USDA organic certified and then do all the stuff biodynamic certified on top of it. So then I, I was like organic certified. So then I looked up organic certifiers and I found one in Florida, QCS, they're very good. And um, uh, I printed out their uh, organic uh, farm produce uh, application. It was like some 80 page freaking document that 
it was really overwhelming to me. And I sat and stared at these, this thing and the biodynamic one and tried to fill out information for, I had a little, added little bits to it here and there for a two year period. Or like a year and, no, it was a two year, three year period. Yeah, because I had to be here three years before I could get certified. So, um, I, uh, I filled it out a little here, a little there, and I saw that the last 30 pages was all relating to, um, international and Canada. So I'm like, oh, I don't need to do that. So I just threw those pages away. I'm like, oh, I'm down to 40 pages. <laughs> And I'd ask for help, and I'd just let people, my, my, my support system would say, you can do it, and smile. And um, uh, I just saw that you needed to have records. And so the most important thing you can do is to take daily notes. And if you don't understand what taking daily notes are, then maybe you are not capable of becoming certified uh, organic or biodynamic. Daily notes are kind of self-explanatory. Um, you shouldn't need any more, you shouldn't need any more information than that. So it's a complicated process. So you kind of have to use your brain. Um, I don't have that much of a brain, so if I could do it, anybody could do it. <clears throat> Though I do feel like my brain's gotten better since I've been eating our biodynamic produce and only eating organic. So I think if you want to be certified biodynamic and organic, you have to be fully committed. You can't like still be eating um, <sighs> conventionally grown food and meat and milk and even if you do it a little bit, you gotta be 100% committed. I mean, you just really, you have to be. I just don't think there's any other way around that. Um, you just, and that includes your, you gotta go through your house, throw away all your raid, you got to throw away all your industrial cleaners, your Lysols and all that stuff. And you gotta start looking at alternative ways to clean your house and Guess what? There's a lot better natural ways out there than uh, those products that are just make you sick and pollute our planet. So um, you just have to be committed to organic. No, you can't do everything, anything partial. So anyway, just wanted to say that. So uh, <clears throat> you take the daily notes and then you start filling in this this application and eventually you can get most of it filled out and um, as long as you have your daily notes that you've been keeping records of right from the start if you haven't started right from the start starting today is very a good idea um, so then I uh, got the organic one filled out and I applied and I realized because they pointed out that there may be some problems with some of the stuff that I had been doing. I just thought I knew everything about organic. That's why all these people that say, no, we're not certified, but we're passing the savings on to you. Well, if you're not certified, you have not qualified yourself to know what organic is. So, yeah, you might have a better understanding than some people, but I thought I knew it all and I did not. So I'm just saying, you need to check yourself and there's a reason why they have all these procedures and standards in place. <clears throat> There's lots of rules. Uh, I used to hear like major YouTube mango growers in Florida acting like they were organic and they just indiscriminately spray copper nonstop. And um, 
they would justify it by saying it's OMRI approved. And it's like, uh, you need to read the fine print on all these products because you have to get permission to use some of them. They may be on the OMRI list, but you have to get permission. There's a little squirrel. I haven't seen one of you in a long time. Um, so, yeah. And really spraying copper just indiscriminately because you mismanage your mangoes uh, doesn't mean that it's good. It's like a really bad thing for Florida. It is. I mean, it, it just kills frogs. I mean, give me a break. It's like, I don't even need to go into it. We don't have fungal issues on our mangoes, so it is totally unnecessary. Yes, we will have some, at the beginning, some fungal issues on the younger trees, but eventually, with the buildup in the soil health, the fungal issues all go away over time. And um, you can't beat fungal issues uh, with a chemical or a, a product. It has to be a biological. That's the only way to win with fungi. <clears throat> Combat fungi with fungi. So you gotta let nature do it. Anyway, so yeah, you uh, may think you know what you're doing, uh, but guaranteed probably you don't. And But I didn't make any major errors, but a lot of times you think you're, oh, you have to, you have to make sure everything you apply is organic approved. So it has the USDA organic thing. So your earthworm castings has to be all USDA organic. You can't, you have to try to always, you have to always use the organic products. It's just, that's just how it is. So, and sometimes you can get confused by like organic black cow compost, but it doesn't have the USDA organic seal on it. So um, there's a good chance that you're not gonna be able to get certified if you use something like that. Um, it's, it's very confusing and um, that's why I, I'm saying it's like, uh, you may think you know what you're doing, but you probably don't. There's a lot more rules. And unfortunately, the organic standards have been so polluted by um, big money and um, people that give money to the, to the politicians that it's kind of a very low standard in now. So uh, you kind of have to, if you want to be a legitimate organic, you kind of have to get uh, like a, a real organic seal, like the Real Organic Project certified seal or biodynamics. And biodynamics is a known form of regenerative farming. And as far as I know, that's what we need to be doing right now. I mean, I, uh, we're kind of on life support here in Florida um, with the, the ignorance. I do see a little bit less glyphosate use this year, but last year they like were going hog wild around here, spraying the lining. And they must have had to get rid of a lot of product because they just like, oh, it's just so depressing. Hi ladies, hi my little girls. So, um, yeah, daily notes and, uh, filling out the application and then finally completing it and submitting it, the organic one. We passed our, and then they, they like quiz you and give you a, they grill you. They give you a test, you know, 
Uh, they they, you, they fill it in. Once you pass that part, then they send some. You have to pay a little bit of money. It's not that expensive. Um, I mean, it's like 500 bucks or something. It's it's cheap. And then, um, or you know, it's not that much. Uh, and then they uh, they have to do an on-site inspection with their certifiers if you if you do everything right on the application which fortunately we did it was hit or miss for a while and our application for organic took a long time it took like 90 days <clears throat> I, don't, I think that's longer than usual um, I think maybe because I used a product that maybe was questionable at the time or something like that, but I can't really remember. But they came out, um, a, a certifier, and um, they checked everything out. I had to walk it, walk them through everything, and and then they like did their little uh, question and answer thing. So then they start asking all these questions and. Um, I had to, you know, you have to answer all these questions and it, it can be like, kind of intimidating and nerve wracking if you're not really used to uh, school testing and stuff like I wasn't. I mean, I was like almost 60 years old doing this. And anyway, so we got it. We got certified and I was thrilled, but then I started pecking at the biodynamic application and oh my god that was like so uh, so oh yes that just fell on my hand ice cream mango perfectly ripe I was wondering what happened to those other ones back there but I guess they fell off anyway so I started picking at the those other ones did fall off. I didn't get them in time. Um, the application on the biodynamic, and they like so go f so far beyond organic that it's it is a little intimidating. I mean, you have to figure out how much nitrogen you're applying, how much nitrogen each. Um, How much nitrogen each? Uh, that's a nice little harvest for ice cream mangoes, second crop. But I had some more on there, but I think that they fell off. And because none of them are on this tree, it looks like somebody plucked them off. Some creature. Um, yeah, I see a little trail right there. Um, how much nitrogen you're applying per acre and then you have to know how to make, I see mango seeds on the ground over there. So somebody must be eating all my fruit. Um, how much nitrogen you're applying. And I know I keep saying that, but it was just, oh, compost. You have to make compost, which I had been doing, biodynamic compost. And thank you, I'll take the seed. Somebody has a nice little nest down there. And uh, it's, it was just a lot. They, you have to do rotational grazing with the livestock and you have to include livestock into your system. And it was a lot more detailed. Fortunately, I had my horses and then donkeys and then cows. So I did have livestock, but they really, you have to apply the biodynamic preps and you have to do all your planting by the moon calendar. And I found that I kind of am like lined up with the moon calendar anyway. So that really is not a problem. I just plant when I feel like planting and it's right, usually. <clears throat> uh, so that's that wasn't really a problem. But there's a lot of different things that you have to do that 
biodynamic doesn't require. But so I filled out that, I finished filling out that application and sent it off. And um, I mean, you know, this was a, like a three year process of four years for the biodynamic of filling out the application. Um, they were, the biodynamic people were very um, nice. Uh, I think I requested the application like three times over four years and finally got it completely right and turned it in and paid my little money and um, they approved my uh, farm plan and um, then they came out and gave me their inspection and um, uh, on-site interview and I'm telling you nothing gets past the biodynamic people nothing uh, you cannot fool these people not that I tried but um, they're just very on top of things the, the organic certifiers were too but the biodynamic people, they were like a whole different, in a whole different range. <clears throat> the organic people are more into like rules and stuff. Mostly all their stuff is designed around, now is designed around uh, a, making rules uh, for safety. I think that distracts people from the issues that they've created for themselves of watering down their organic programs, but I don't know. <laughs> I can't figure it out. I'm just glad I'm biodynamic certified. And I'm glad that somebody finally has come to me and actually said they want to be biodynamic certified. And that's why I made this video. Hopefully it will help somebody. Anyway, have a good day. It's Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Bar.